Yeah. So this is the part where we get our uh, our guest from last time. I don't remember if he had a special name, but you know the guest from the Konosu episode. And we tell we have him get out his story of us kidnapping him and forcing him onto that episode from his perspective. Yeah. yeah. Oh right? god. For the first half of this entire story section. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's it's really funny because. Our friend who was on for the Konosuba episode actually really, really dislikes Overlord um, on the principle that he's only seen the first episode and therefore he has the same issue that I had with it originally. In which the, yeah, the first episode is yeah. rather fan servicey, but also I'd be willing to bet like at least 50 bucks that he would not be happy with this first arc. No. This is not really no. up his alley. Uh, Too no. much sex. Yeah, it's not ever portrayed like as degenerate. Uh, yeah. Uh, and Sully is that first episode kind of did. That's true. That the, first episode was terrible, but off off the topic of the yeah, first episode. I think, um, so this is sort of a start, I think, of where Overlord does its thing where it likes to grab, like, take arcs from perspectives of characters in the world as opposed to Ayn's and his crew. Yeah. Um, this arc in particular is basically entirely from the perspective of the of a li- the group of lizard men. Yeah, yes. so, so this first arc lasts for the first uh, five episodes. And it's the, we, we call it the lizard men arc. I think there's another name for it, but who gives a That actually might be the name of it. Well, hopefully it, it is. is. Yeah, yeah, so it's the lizard man arc. And then um, there's kind of a, a Sebas and Klein going through after that. Yeah. Um, yeah. As the second really big part of this uh, set. But it's really two kind of overarching arcs. And then the Sebas and Klein one is maybe a little more fuzzy than the lizard men but the lizard men's a pretty solid arc i mean we stay on them for five episodes it's a story told out you know um we get to learn a lot about the characters um and we get to learn a lot about the characters without the influence of eins and his crew and then with the influence of eins and his crew yep it's interesting because this is sort of the start of where you see eins and his crew portrayed more as villains in their own story Right, because like the first season, they're pretty consistently. Well, you're like, yeah, they, they feel more like villainous larpers than they do actual villains. This is the first season where you actually see them portrayed as villains, as opposed to just larpers of villainy. Yeah, f- first season, it's it's more like when you and your D and D crew go out and kind of do some like shitty stuff, but like not super shitty. And then yeah. second season is when you actually create a cult following you and start eviscerating people. Yeah, yes. <laughs> all by accident. Yeah, where, where the DM isn't, uh, where the DM isn't going to be able to kill you with goblins because you decided to be an asshole. Exactly. <laughs> it's not quite murder hobo level, but like you're getting to like evil NPC status. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I like I said, I have to say, the the first season, and I we're gonna be comparing a lot just because that's our closest comparison mm-hmm. in the first season. A lot, the arcs were a lot more woven together. So it was like an episode here, an episode there, and they were kind of shorter. And in this season, you really have this one arc that is five episodes solid. And then they're still mentioned again after that. So this is the first arc that's really like a solid single story progression. Right. Yeah. Um, And it's really well done, in my opinion. I love the characters. I like the plot and storyline. I like seeing the change in Ainz and his party. I actually think it's rather interesting because this season overall doesn't have all that much Ainz in it. He really doesn't get a lot of spotlight for like the last few episodes. Yeah, yeah which is kind of great because we yeah. saw so much of him in season one. Season one, he was undoubtedly the main character. This season, I don't know if I'd say there is a main character if you removed this season from the context of season one. And yeah. and even if you did, I'd say that honestly, Sebas and Klein have a better claim to it than Ainz does since they have their own arc. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's very, it's very much they get their own roles, and then Ayn's just kind of is sort of, he's always there, obviously, but, you know, it's more, it's, the spotlight is more on the other characters in the story. This feels like those arcs of Naruto where Naruto isn't involved. And it's, the, are the, are the, <laughs> I'm looking are, forward to those arcs. <laughs> You're never gonna get there. <laughs> Damn it. No, there, there are a few arcs in, in Naruto where they follow different groups of people and Naruto's not really involved, but this is what it feels like. This feels like those arcs where you get to explore characters who aren't Heinz and his yeah. immediate lieutenants constantly. It's interesting for world building. On the other hand, at least I think this is a double-edged sword because at the same time, these first five episodes 
don't really amount to much and can feel kind of fillery if you really look at them. Yeah, because you it, it builds the world, but it doesn't build a lot of the world. It builds yeah. one very specific small piece in great detail. And I think that that's more so kind of an issue with the anime overall, because I'd imagine that you could get a lot more out of explaining an arc in, like, say, the light novel and, itself. And I could I could imagine in a game like this Lizard Man arc, in, a, in an RPG context, this is the equivalent of, like, a quest. Like, a story quest. This feels like a one-off campaign set in the same world as an ongoing campaign. Exactly. It's like, it's like a side quest. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're, you're walking through the town and an NPC goes, hello, sir, would you help me with this thing? And you can choose to accept or not accept and it won't matter. But if you do, you get this whole other story. But in some ways also, that means that we're not developing the world as a whole. Like in, in season one, we got a lot of the, the world as a whole, like mechanics. And we don't really get that in season two so much. Well, not in this first half. Yeah, I think in the second the half, half, we get plenty of it. The second half feels a little bit more like a sequel to season one. Yeah, because I, I think part of it is because we move around more in the second half. Mm -hmm. uh, and we interact with a more, a more varied cast of people and a lot more people in general. And there's a lot, like, the second half has a lot more plot lines that feel like continuations of what was set up in season one, whereas the first half is sort of its own thing. Like, you could have the first half as a bit of a standalone mm -hmm. and not to watch anything except for maybe the first two episodes of season one. And you would you would get it in as much as you would get it after watching the entirety of season one. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think on the whole, though, second season, solid mm -hmm. story. I, there's no real like large downfalls. Most of no. what we're criticizing is actually nitpicking, which yeah. is pretty impressive for us. Mm -hmm. Normally we can find something to nitpick at that we really dislike. Yeah. I do have to say, I did really like the second arc. A lot. Yeah. The second arc. Yeah. I think part of that for me though is because so I really like the second arc too. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, the difference was I don't know the lizard men from season one, but I knew Sebas from season one. So like it was a continuation of a character that I already knew and liked. Yeah. As opposed to the lizard men, which were just kind of like this brand new thing. Right. That we got to see for a couple episodes and then it was done. You know? And I think in a lot of ways, sometimes we do cling to familiarity. So if there's a character we know that we like that's continuing, we're going to be like, I like that. Yeah, I think for me, it's just entirely because the second half feels a little bit more like we're watching the, more of the first season. Because the first half is kind of its own thing. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the so I think the reason I like the Lizard Men arc so much more than like most of the other arcs, like I do like Sabas's arc, but I do like the Lizard Men arc because it's more of a because while it doesn't affect directly affect like the overall plot that's happening, like with the kingdoms and everything, it's more of its own like kind of side plot. It is sort of like kind of like you get to see firsthand what Ainz's ultimate goal is and that's still just as much benefit as he can get for the tomb of Nazareth and his experiments because what he because what Ainz's ultimate goal here is essentially to create steady streams of like things for him to use like it's a very like things that are very minor or like offhanded comments that are like at the very beginning of the season by Demiurge um where basically he's gone kind of like north i think it's like northeast northeast of the kingdom or whatever to go find this tribe of like sheep men or something like that i can't remember what their actual name was um but basically it, it doesn't like give the full detail of it but basically he's harvesting their skin for their scroll so that way they can make parchments for the scrolls yeah sheepskin yep, yep. very popular yes vellum yep High level ship. Yeah. Exactly. I do think though the Lizard Man arc does have its own advantage here, where it's kind of since it's its own self contained thing, I can easily see myself going back and watching it as a bite, as its own thing separately. Yeah, I, I couldn't necessarily do that with um, the second half of the season. No. I would have to watch season one again, but with just the Lizard Man, I could watch that on its own. I could watch it as its own little like mini like, anime series and get a good lot out of it, I think. Oh, you know? yeah. But it's still a good arc. It's really well done. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. No, but you know, 10 out of 10, I think solid continuation from season one. Um, and I'm looking forward to whenever someone puts season three into the hat and season four in the movie when they come out. I don't know. The movie might just be a recap. Because I think the previous movies were all recaps. Right? Yeah. yeah. The so they might have been announced the movie okay. is just a recap of season well, four. Then we'll season see. four. Yeah. With that being said, we'll be back to talk about characters. Try harder, everyone. See ya.